Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Mary Tupan, and I'm the director of the Center for Diversity Policy in The Hague in the Netherlands. And um, I am um, moderating this, this, this coming session. And this session is about scaling up I Belong products and toolkits. And for this session, we have four partners from uh, the different universities that have been developing the uh, intellectual uh, outputs. And we have two guests from uh, the Global South, Eliana Amaral. She's a professor at the medical school of the University of Campinas, Unicamp, and a member of the State Council on Education for Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we have Mr. Kevin Muchemi, financial aid manager at Strathmore University um, at the Students' Financial Aid Office in Kenya. And so um, the plan is that we have that we start with uh, the four uh, partner uh, members, and after that, and they will present for about 15 minutes. After that, we have each of our guests to present and reflect. On, um, on the outcomes of, 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 of uh, I Belong uh, each 10 minutes. And then hopefully you as an audience will uh, join us in the conversation as well. And I am um, the, the four partner um, panel members are uh, Liz Thomas. Uh, she's professor at the Faculty of Education at Hill University. Uh, Marika Mewissen, you already heard her. She's associate professor uh, educational Sciences and Director of the Bachelor of Pedagogical Sciences at the Erasmus University in Rotterdam and also the project leader of the I Belong Project. Miriam Lutze, she's Associate Professor at Rostock University, previously also part of the I Belong Project team for the University of Osnabrück. And Sofia Marcus da Silva, the host for today. You already met her. She's the principal researcher and associate professor at the Faculty of Psychology and Education Sciences at this university, the University of Porto. So um, I wanted to start with giving Liz the floor. Liz. Thank you so much and um, thank you for the welcome and I'm really happy to be joined by, by uh, Kevin and Ilana. Um, briefly, I've been asked to say a little bit about the whole programme and then to talk about the first of our intellectual outputs, which are the dialogue days. And the I Belong Project is, is an innovative programme of interventions which are interconnected and are developed to, to improve students' sense of belonging and to improve their success in higher education. And as Marika says, we've been, we started working together in 2018 and we've been evaluating and exploring what's been working. And so it is, it is unusual, I think, in that it works at course level and it involves students, teachers and mentors and, and really encourages them to work together. So it's not sort of about a hierarchy or them and us, it's about everybody working together. Um, so, so and, and I think you've probably seen a version of this slide already this morning, that the, the three things are the dialogue days, and I'll talk a little bit more about those, team teacher reflection, which Marika will talk a little bit more about, and then about community mentoring, which we'll just cover quite briefly in this session, as we're going to cover in more detail in the session later today. Um, so dialogue days. Um, in the UK, as, as, as some of the uh, colleagues here today will know, we, we have worked quite hard on induction and moved induction away from just activities where students are given information to much more embedded and interactive activities. But the dialogue days take that even further, I think, and really try to facilitate discussion about diversity and belonging with students and staff and really help the people to, to feel comfortable talking about these more challenging issues, even a little bit like the way that the first session this morning did, that we're actually talking about people's fears and experiences and, and how they overcame them. And one of the key things we've done is really encourage staff to share their experiences 
and she talked about how it hasn't always been straightforward for, for, for staff as well as for students. And the idea is that the students perhaps feel reassured and understand the institutional commitment to diversity, but also that the staff understand that, that their students who may or may not look similar or homogenous are, are, are kind of uh, more complex in the diversity needs that they have. And then we worked through, through those activities in the team teacher reception to actually help staff to learn from that and, and, and implement change through a more inclusive learning and teaching environment. So uh, uh, how do we do it? This is perhaps repeating a little bit of what I said, but we, we very much created a safe space and provided that opportunity to talk about things and share things that people feel com comfortable with. And also recognize the strengths and successes that people already have in, in terms of getting that point to be in higher education. Um, and it does really provide those insights. So we were able to encourage students to share some of the things they were concerned about and the ways that staff could support them to be successful. And so staff were able very early on in the academic year to, to start to get to know their students and to think about how they might, how they might be supported better. Um, and so I think this gives students a voice very early on about the, their issues. And hopefully that's a voice that many of them want to continue kind of using to inform the development of their academic program and, 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 and really dialogue between staff and students continues. And I must say the mentors that we had at, at um, Edge Hill have been really important in that process as well. I think I shall hand over now to Marika. Thank you, Liz. Um, I will shortly introduce the, the team teacher reflections. Um, well, the team teacher reflections, well, they are mostly collaborative sessions for teams of teachers. Um, and that is also one of the most uh, innovative parts of this uh, activity. Um, so it's about uh, teacher professionalization. And uh, what we oftentimes see is that if uh, teachers, if staff wants to professionalize, uh, it's based on individual uh, needs. Um, and especially in terms of uh, the, the topic of diversity, inclusion, exclusion, um, not all uh, teachers feel the need to do that. So we designed this activity as a team-based activity. So it's entire staff teams um, from course programs participating in this um, reflection sessions. And well, the, the TTR is mostly aimed at making teaching more inclusive and supportive uh, for our diverse students in higher education. And in the team teacher reflection, we offer teams of teachers the tools and the support um, that is needed to be able to, yeah, to constructively deal with all challenges and questions um, in, in diverse classrooms in higher education. Um, how? Yes, uh, thank you, Liz. Uh, so how do we uh, do that? Uh, well, first, it's very important that we introduce staff teams of teachers uh, with a vocabulary uh, based on theoretical concepts and frameworks to explore diversity and inclusion in education um, from different perspectives. So um, I already named some central concepts such as diversity, inclusion, exclusion, but also the difference between uh, equality and equity, for example. And in the team teacher reflections, we really encourage the staff teams uh, to translate this theory into their daily practice um, and also to um, be involved in engaging conversations about uh, diversity, uh, inclusion and exclusion. And it's really important that uh, the team teacher reflections are embedded um, in the curriculum. Um, and also in the staff meetings, because if you organize them uh, once in a while, we have noticed, uh, then, uh, well, it will get lost the conversations and the discussions in the daily practice of teaching or research, for example. So we have moved towards a model in which we implement uh, the TTR in uh, reoccurring staff uh, meetings. Um, 
the TTR really allowed the teaching staff to um, yeah, improve their skills uh, and also the teaching methods based on student experiences. So we uh, collect um, student experiences, student uh, stories from, for example, our community uh, mentors and also from the uh, dialogue days. And that's how you see that uh, our activities are all interrelated. Um, so in that way, we can um, contribute to um, well, positively impacting the sense of belonging of uh, diverse students in higher education. We move on to the third. Thank you, Marike. Yes. Miriam is now. Yes, thank you. So the community mentoring uh, as a component of the hashtag I belong project is a set of activities to create accessible peer learning communities in higher education. In the community mentoring program, we want to reach first year students with diverse backgrounds and, with, uh, and to create inclusive learning environments to uh, welcome them, them in higher education institutions. With the mentoring program, we want to strengthen for in a long-term perspective, the sense of belonging for mentees, so for the first year students, but also for the mentors, because they become aware of their biography, of their learnings in the uh, community mentoring process with their mentees. And so that's uh, why we also strengthen the sense of belonging of the mentors, the benefit for them. And how do we do that? Um, please. Yes, thank you, Liz. <laughs> um, how we do that? Um, we um, are building social networks between mentors and mentees. So the community mentoring stimulates the students belonging to social networks and identification with university. Um, so for the incoming students, um, they uh, get familiar with the higher education context and also the mentors get aware of the higher education institution where they are in at the moment of the starting process of the mentoring. The community mentoring also develops the new role models by empowering student mentors through self-reflection and coaching. So the mentors get a training to um, get um, familiar with the role they have as a mentor. And in this process, uh, they also um, get uh, some activities um, uh, to get um, self-reflecting activities um, and uh, reflect their own biography as a student um, with uh, their individual background. And the third uh, thing uh, is, or the third aspect, community mentoring supports collaboration, collaboration between peer groups. We have a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring approach, um, so they are on the same level and uh, they can, um, yeah, uh, interrelate uh, with their experiences and the mentors can um, exchange about their experiences and the mentees benefit from these experiences. To get more information about the community mentoring, I would like to invite you to the session this afternoon. Um, so there we will share our experiences by rolling out the community mentoring program in our faculties and universities. And you can uh, get more information in this part of the today's conference. Thank you, Miriam. Now, Sophia. Thank you, Mary. Um, so one of the things that the I Belong team decided to do throughout the project was to have a transversal dimension of research in order to monitor uh, how we were working and developing the IOs and also to have some more uh, um, situated uh, information to, to, to help us in developing the activities and uh, uh, regarding the uh, intellectual outputs. And uh, uh, so we developed a research, a mixed methods uh, research, 
uh, to understand also um, the sense of belonging of students, uh, how they were living their experiences in higher education, uh, etc. So we decided to organize it in uh, four uh, parts. So we had a, a questionnaire, a survey with students uh, with four scales uh, on interaction, sense of belonging, support, self-efficacy. And uh, um, uh, in the, uh, at some point, we included some items on mentoring, on the mentoring experience. So this uh, questionnaire was delivered uh, every uh, beginning of the, the school year and in the end to the same cohort in order to understand the impact, um, not only uh, of the activities, but mostly about their integration and inclusion in the, in the study program, faculty and university. And uh, so we also uh, did a focus group discussion with the first year students and uh, this focus group discussion was more concerned in collecting information about the decision making process to go to higher education, the relationship uh, in the faculty with staff, teachers, peers and within uh, with the, the contacts in, in general to understand their sense of belonging to these different uh, three uh, dimensions, to the study program, to the faculty and to the university. And we had here some interesting results among the, 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 the partners of I Belong. And also at some point we integrated a new topic which was uh, suggested by uh, a student during one Fox Group discussion, which was tips for first year students. Um, uh, then we also uh, and integrated and uh, uh, fed by the focus group discussion of students. We developed also focus group discussion with the, with teachers. Uh, we were here in this focus group concerned with dimensions of diversity that they face in their in their environment. Uh, strategies they already developed to promote sense of belonging and inclusion, barriers that they also face uh, in their institution and with their students, and uh, uh, their perspectives about our activities uh, within I, I Belong. Um, last year, um, we decided also to uh, organize a focus group discussion specifically focus on COVID uh, challenges, we were very much concerned uh, about uh, how the, the mentoring activities uh, were affected and how uh, institutions and this uh, mentoring program developed new strategies to face uh, challenges that came uh, specifically from the, the pandemic uh, situation. And you already heard before uh, some, some uh, uh, testimonies on, on that from, from the students that we invited. Um, of course, that this, uh, sorry, Liz, uh, uh, this, uh, th this strategy, this uh, research was done by all uh, university partners of I Belong. Um, and in the case of University of Porto, we also transfer this uh, process to another institution, a, pot a polytechnic institution, where we pilot uh, the activities of I Belong project, and it was very interesting to see if it's possible to transfer um, the I Belong activities to another institution. And we also did the survey there and the focus group discussion with the students. So, please, please, thank you. So, some very quickly, some key messages from this experience uh, doing research along together with the development of the activities is well, this is not new, of course. The universities are diverse, uh, uh, more and more diverse, and this has impact in how institutions uh, organize themselves to, to uh, welcome this diversity of students, their specific uh, expectations, uh, and they need to reorganize themselves in order to promote uh, different levels of engagement uh, of these students. Sense of belonging in higher education is a multidimensional phenomenon, a multidimensional concept is related to a diversity of uh, factors. And we think that intersectionality is relevant to us to, to develop, continue to develop our activities and to be able to transfer what we, what we learn. Liz, please. 
Uh, also, something that we, another key message is the fact that teachers and staff in general are key players in the process of integrating, including and engaging students in academic life. Students refer in almost all of our university partners uh, the relevance of inclusive pedagogic strategies at classroom level um, to develop their sense of belonging. And they also mentioned the importance of social bonds and social networks. And this is very close to what we heard this morning uh, from the students that we, that we, from the mentors that we invite. Uh, so another key match, message that was for us very interesting is while we were developing the focus group discussion, uh, the focus group discussion specifically with students and staff was a moment of awareness, of raising awareness. So the research is not always just research, is intervention or at least is an, an opportunity while we are discussing and collecting data, we are truly, uh, you know, uh, raising awareness and reflecting together. So this was really an interesting moment. The transfer of oh, I belong IOs to other institutions and program is possible and relevant. The experience of piloting this uh, showed that. Um, however, we, we also think that the transference depends on the institutional ethos of each uh, place. Um, so, and those were the main key messages from this experience of uh, developing a small uh, research along the main activities of the I Belong project. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Okay, good. So now I would like to um, ask uh, Eliana to start. And Eliana, maybe you can start also um, saying, um, reflecting a little bit on what sense of belonging and inclusion means in the context of Brazil and uh, ask you to reflect on the, the different uh, presentations that you've heard so far. Thank you. Hi, well, thank you for the invitation. I think it's a great opportunity. Well, um, I have to first to say that in Brazil, uh, different from other parts of the world, the higher, the public higher education, uh, students don't pay for that, but there is a, a mismatch between the, the let's say the, the people who come from the higher strata of the society, use it to be the ones reaching these public institutions that are the research institutions well known and re well respected. On the other side, the labor, uh, the labor class, the people who are in lower strata of the society, use it to try to get higher education as much as possible. But in fact, only one fifth of the, the Brazilians go to higher education. So this is so there, there are two important issues that have to be remembered. So uh, talking about um, the sense of belonging. And from the perspective of these research institutions where one of them is Unicamp, where I, I work and is considered kind of the top three institutions in country, for, for this group of people who use it to fight to get some higher education in private, low, uh, low uh, how can I say, uh, fees that were not very... Uh, expensive that they could afford and etc. Now, 50% of our students do come from this strata of the society. So I think it is an, as an important uh, perspective to understand that the sense of belonging uh, is first. You don't believe that you belong because you come from another social class. And coming to another social class, uh, your cultural background sometimes uh, gives much more difficult to understand even the vocabulary. The vocabulary is very special. And as a, as a big example, we at Unicamp uh, in the last two years, we do have in the three years, we do have a special selection process for indigenous pro, uh, people. And indigenous, they don't have even Portuguese as a first language, okay? 
So uh, not only the vocabulary in academic environment, but also the, the, when, when we make the words short, so it's impossible. You, you do need a kind of a dictionary of all the, <laughs> all the abbreviations that are used at the university. So giving an example of something that makes you totally out of the institution, people talk about as it is uh, very familiar and it's not. Uh, so I, I want to give a start on, on this perspective. The other issue that needs to give the sense of belonging is to be able to basically understand and follow, even if with difficulties, the, the initial disciplines and teaching units. And again, what happens is when students and then from the lower strata of the society or the others, both sides, when they have difficulties, they start to be, uh, to feel that they are not part of this, this world. I'm not able, it's impossible and et cetera. So this, this phase of uh, low performance is one of the biggest issues in, in institutions like ours uh, where we know that the level of uh, that is expected from students, it's a high level and people are not even familiar with uh, the kind of knowledge or the kind of uh, thinking that is necessary because that then comes one, one issue that is the, our high school education, the secondary education, doesn't give the competences, the, the general competences that are necessary for students to move to this kind of institutions that uh, have more on critical thinking as, as the basis of the program. So uh, these are very important issues. And also the sense of belonging comes when students are recognized by their peers. This is another point because due to the social differences, maybe color, maybe your you know, sexual uh, options and etc., they may find not uh, recognized by the peers themselves. And again, I will give you the example of the indigenous population that came to our university uh, because they, they tell us that their peers in the classroom or in the, in the cohort they do not mix as it was expected. So I wanted to start from this, this perspective and the institution has responsibility to work with that. But uh, yes, each one is each one and has a history and we have to listen to that. Thank you so much, uh, Eliana. And um, maybe to follow up on, um, it, I mean, I, I, I do understand what you're saying. I mean, uh, having a, an increasing uh, movement to improve access to higher education for a broader um, parts of, of the country that, that comes with its uh, own um, challenges. And one of the things is, is a sense of belonging and not just to enter the university, but also to make sure that students finish the university successfully. And, um, and I, I think it's, it's, it, it's very much uh, comparable with the kind of um, um, interventions that have been uh, developed that within I belong that there's a focus on, you know, making sure that students uh, can settle within the institutions, but also the peer-to-peer -peer relations that you were referring to, and also to make sure that uh, faculty is aware of what it takes to have such a diverse uh, community. So um, maybe uh, later we can, uh, can, can come back also to see if uh, one of the um, uh, interventions like the dialogue days, like uh, the team teacher reflections, if that would also be uh, interesting also for your context. Um, um, now I would like to ask Kevin to, um, to start and to share some reflections. Okay, thank you very much. Uh... Mary, uh, my name is Kevin from Strathmore University. Uh, Strathmore University is a private university in Kenya and uh, it's a leading university in many aspects. Uh, but uh, just to dive in into uh, what I've been asked to do, 
I'd like to give you a bit of a context of our country, Kenya, so, uh, and our university in that context. So when you talk about uh, sense of belongingness, uh, in our country, um, this is actually enshrined in our national values. And our national values are captured in uh, Article 10 of our 2010 constitution. And uh, we have 14 values. And of the 14, it's very interesting to realize that six of these values speak very much to a sense of belonging. And I'd like to just quickly mention some of them here. You know, one is on human dignity. That's the number six value. Another is on equity, uh, equality, uh, social justice, inclusiveness, uh, which is uh, our 10th value, human rights. And then uh, the 12th one is actually very, uh, very specific, says non-discrimination and protection of marginalized groups. So coming from that context, and I mean, uh, given that this is actually enshrined in our national values, uh, as a university um, established in 1961 in the pre-independent Kenya, um, Strathmore was the first institution to have uh, three um, races uh, studying the same uh, institution. So before, before independence, we had you know whites in a different school, uh, then Asians in a different schooling system, and Africans in a different one. But uh, Strathmore was established uh, as the first uh, institution to have all these three races study together just a few years, three years into our independence. How have we, uh, what are the challenges we've had as an institution in, the, in, the, in terms of a sense of belongingness? Um, given it's a private institution without uh, government funding, it means that our tuition is uh, relatively expensive compared to uh, our other uh, uh, institutions of higher education. We have 75 of them in the country, uh, most of them public and a few other, uh, and the rest private. So the challenges uh, we've seen uh, range from, you know, financial challenges. So you'd have you know, students who would have loved to come and, you know, get this high quality education at Strathmore University, but then may not be able to access uh, that um, uh, that opportunity. And if they do, uh, then they will require quite a bit of financial aid to get them to feel, you know, that to enjoy that, that sense of belongingness. And so our, one of our responses has been uh, that we have one of the strongest uh, financial aid uh, offices uh, in all the universities relatively compared, uh, I mean, in our, in our country. And we try to give quite a number of products to address that. So we have, you know, scholarships, student loans, uh, work study, uh, grad prep and all sorts of things, bursaries. So we, we really try to uh, give them a, a good cocktail of the same. Another challenge that we faced has been a cultural one, given that we are doing very well as an institution and with the many partnerships uh, across the world, we've then been able to attract uh, students from other parts of Africa. So we have uh, our nationality and the women have a diversity in the sense that we have about 32, in some years we've gone all the way to 42 nationalities uh, re represented in our university. And that means a very high level of diversity uh, culturally. So you have students from Francophone uh, regions who then uh, sometimes have a challenge adopting to the, you know, our English uh, um, teaching environment. And uh, this actually I uh, tied to the team teacher reflection I see as a tool that could actually, I mean, from uh, the I Belong project, uh, this could be a, a very uh, interesting uh, tool that we could try to apply to our context because uh, often then you'd find uh, some of the students suffer quite a bit in class because either of their accent or to follow things, you know, because they've just learned English. Uh, and they're actually learning, uh, you know, as they study. And some of our programs can be quite uh, intensive. So, you know, just mixing the jargon and the language and, and the cultural difference also can be a challenge. And so I see a, a big, uh, I, I could borrow a lot from the teacher, uh, the team teacher reflection uh, too. Another uh, challenge has been um, mental health. Uh, and this many times comes with, uh, you know, uh, 
drug abuse and things like that. So given it's a higher education context, sometimes we have students who have uh, problems, these problems uh, from high school and they get into campus with the, this challenge. And so if you don't, if you're not sensitive enough to be able to, to identify and uh, you know guide these students through, uh, then sometimes they actually feel quite uh, you know, uh, deprived of a sense of belonging to the campus. Uh, so we've, been, we've tried a few things around that. Uh, some of them include a, a robust uh, student activity. So, you know, in terms of student clubs and sports to uh, more or less get as many of these people to participate and, you know, uh, use their talents and, get, you know, feel that they belong not only from a class perspective, but also from a, a, a universal uh, feel like sports. Um, and then also our clinic, we have a health center and the, the, the medical team there also tries quite a bit to have um, psychosocial counselors uh, on standby in case of, you know, and open to support our students in that regard. Um, we also do have a mentoring uh, system at the university, but the mentoring happens between staff and students. So we have uh, mentors assigned uh, students and the way we do it of course would be uh, so male mentors you know for male students female students to, you know uh, female uh, I mean female mentors uh, but I see also the idea of a community mentoring again as a tool from this project could be something that we could consider uh, we've tried to do it informally it's not in a in, in, a, in a arranged format as has been prescribed uh, by the presentations from uh, uh, Professor Thomas uh, earlier, uh, but it's something we could actually do. Uh, it's the challenge of our context would be, I'm not very sure how that would work because uh, we some, sometimes the feeling has been that we, we feel that all these students actually require someone, you know, who's uh, you know, being the, who's working already, who's a bit elder, elderly, more experienced to sort of guide them. And uh, there's a bit of an apprehension around uh, whether a student who may be lost in their ways, <laughs> or who may be struggling with one, 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 you know, one challenge or another, could then be expected to guide the other. But I see the merits as uh, shared in this presentation. I'd like to stop there and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin, as well. And um, <clears throat> before we continue our conversation, I would also like to invite the audience, if there are questions, please raise uh, uh, questions in the, in the chat or on the website chat. And um, I think it's both of your, your reflections are very interesting because, you know, sense of belonging is everything around, it starts when students enter. The university and your concerns are in fact also very much before they enter university. I mean it's about affordability, it's about um, making sure that you can enter uh, in, in Eliana's uh, context, enter a, a, a public university and be prepared to enter a public uh, university um, and, and uh, their cultural uh, issues or different, you know, cultural heritages and backgrounds. Um, and, and those are the, the kinds of, of concerns that you uh, give value to. And I think that is definitely something that we can learn from in Europe to uh, acknowledge those differences, cultural values, uh, because of being part of a different social group or a different cultural uh, group. So that's that's really um, interesting, and I don't see uh, questions here. So um, can I ask, uh, maybe Eliana, you would like to say something about uh, to what extent some of the, the interventions are interesting also for the Brazilian context? Yes, uh, for sure they are, and for sure I would love to have Unicamp as a partner in this project as well. But let me tell you what we have been doing during this, this time that goes in the same direction, can have another name, but it's kind of very similar. Uh, first, in terms of making students more uh, close to the reality of the university, we have the open days at the university and many, many of our students, they, they then 
tell us that they have been visiting Unicamp with their schools in previous years when they are in high school or even before. So we have this scientists for tomorrow or things like that, that we prepare students uh, during their break when they are in high school, they come to Unicamp in projects and, and they spend like a week or two weeks or things like that. So having opportunities to bring particularly the students from this lower strata of the society into the university to know and to understand. But not only from the, the lower strata of the society, even the higher strata of the society, because um, Unicamp is not in the, in the capital city. Uh, we are one, uh, 100 kilometers apart from Sao Paulo and many good students from Sao Paulo would benefit of studying at Unicamp and they, they have no idea about. As you see in the picture, when it comes it's kind of in the middle of a farm, so lots of, of greens and trees. So it's a totally different environment than the urban universe that you have in Sao Paulo city, what's the big capital uh, uh, for us. So uh, talking about this uh, previous, uh, previous experiences, then uh, I have to tell that uh, we have a program that we call Proof is what is a, a kind of college experience that is students, again, from the lower strata of the society if selected uh, as the best performers of their school. They, they come for two years and then they are introduced to the environment of the university before they enter the professional programs like medicine or engineering and etc. And this experience has shown to be the best experience ever for us. Problem, you are expanding two more years for these yeah. students. And second problem, we do support financially because each student has a scholarship, a scientific scholarship, and then they develop these uh, competences that are, that are necessary for uh, academic thinking and academic life. This is very nice, but we have to, it's a kind of pilot, so it has to be increased. We also have all this, uh, the mentoring, the mentoring program started two years ago, and it's very similar to the way you, you do. We have peer mentors, and then we have uh, faculty members that we call tutors for the mentors, Kevin. So we, we, we have a kind of scale <laughs> uh, where someone is responsible for a small group, the other is responsible for the, the mentors. And, and it's working so, so great that this year we had 500 students and faculty members coming to the meeting to be prepared to the mentoring because people are very sensitive with the, the pandemic situation. You know, in Brazil, we are in a very bad pandemic situation. We for sure, will last uh, many more months. And I have to, to, to highlight two other issues that I think are experience that we have here that can be uh, uh, helpful to discuss. We, we do have a program, particularly in medical school called Educators for Tomorrow, where we prepare students in terms of what we do for faculty development, we, we do for students as student development in terms of education, in higher education. So this has been very helpful because this group of people, they have a very good uh, contact with students in need or in difficulties in their programs. And they, they can be a very good connection uh, for people who are having problems uh, during their initial uh, uh, studies. And, and finally, all the extra uh, curricular activities. Our students, they do find uh, a, space, a space that they feel safe and they get mentoring and they develop many competences in what we call extracurricular activities, what is our complementary activities. So I think this is another, uh, another important role. Someone mentioned that the university is not only about the, the classes and the teachers. And uh, yes, and so sports, cultural activities, 
and also activities with the community. Our students go to the community to help others to enter. I mean, they have a kind of program to prepare them for the selection process. And more and more students are really uh, into this uh, connections and extension to the community activities. So uh, I think there are a lot, a lot to do. Thank but you. Yes, Dua. yes. Just finished saying that, yes, uh, dialogue days, teen teachers' reflections and mentoring uh, are really useful and we have in some kind of here. Thank you so much. And also, thank you so much for uh, reminding that learning is not just happening within the institution, but also uh, a lot outside of institution in informal engagement. And that's where a sense of belonging is also, um, you know, uh, benefits uh, from. Um, unfortunately, we... Uh, Please, Kevin, you're, you will have the last uh, say because after this, um, the next speaker is already uh, waiting. And uh, before I give you the floor, I wanted to thank all the four uh, partner, uh, our colleagues uh, from, the, from the project for presenting. And I wanted to uh, thank Iliana and Kevin uh, very much on behalf of the project for your participation and sharing and hope to... Um, to extend our collaboration, uh, definitely. Please, uh, Kevin, uh, you have uh, two minutes. Uh, thank you very much. And I, I do hope not to use all the two minutes. I just wanted to um, highlight, number one, that uh, very much what we spoke about community mentoring, something we'd really want to uh, consider, but it's just a question uh, for the, 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 peop the participants in this project on uh, what, what, uh, what they're going to do to ensure that uh, you have desirable conversations and you know, some peer learning, a, a desirable peer learning around uh, the students when you're doing community mentoring. So it's, it's, it's something uh, because uh, I'm saying about, I'm talking about this because I also wanted to share an idea that we've implemented at the university, which is we are now thinking about the belongingness, not just at the university, but beyond. Yeah. When they graduate from, you know, higher education to work, uh, that transitioning to work, will they belong into the work, working space? And so what we've done is that this year we began what we call industry mentorship. So now we have people, our alumni and the volunteers working in different fields that uh, then uh, make some time to mentor our students, especially those who are in their final years and sort of give them a, a job shadow experience into as a transition into the working environment. That's all I wanted to share and to really appreciate uh, all the work that has gone into uh, preparing this. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kevin. And I think that that's a great addition to, uh, you know, the chain of activities that we can. Um, so the transition to the labor market is definitely a next step, especially for students who are uh, not familiar with the working environments and the codes of certain industries. So uh, thank you. And um, now I am giving the floor back to um, the next um, uh, speaker and the next moderator. But thank you all so much for joining this part.